Welcome to my video lecture series on harmonic distortion. In this video, I want to set up the anticipation of what to expect throughout the series. This is for the vacuum tube hobbyist. So if you're building tube uh, stereo amps or guitar amps, uh, this is really designed for you. Now, if you're a ham radio operator such as myself, this is also applicable, especially when I get into the three uh, methodologies to actually calculate our harmonics distortion. That would be the graphical methodology, one using the Taylor series, and one using a discrete Fourier transform. In this video series, I'm only going to touch on the second and third harmonic because as far as stereo tube amps go and guitar amps, that's the only two, those are the only two harmonics we need to understand. When you get into radio transmission work, it's the fourth harmonic that you need to pay attention to. I'm going to show you the work, which means these, uh, the videos on the math will be much longer because I'm going to set the problem up. I'm going to show you all the terms and I'm going to work out the solution step by step by step so that you have an understanding of what to do, how to do it, and then if you wanted to, you can take it to a fourth harmonic and do that. Quite frankly, it will be easier to use a discrete Fourier transform when I show that to you because I'm going to set it up, show you how it works, and give you the program snippets, the subroutines, and how to call them to actually make a discrete Fourier transform work for you to calculate the harmonic distortion. So there's going to be some math here. Uh, the general knowledge. I, I really want it to be like going to a car show. You go to a car show, you see, see a car, and you pick up the brochure. You want to know how much, of course. But then you want to know what features are evolved, involved with it. How many, you know, the number of horsepower. Uh, is it a hybrid? Is uh, What kind of acceleration does it have? What is it gas mileage? So on and so forth. And that way, it helps you understand not how to design the car, but it tells you, do I want this car or that car? It'll give you uh, information about how to make a decision as to whether or not uh, I want a stereo amp or a guitar amp. And if a stereo amp, is it what, what flavor of stereo amp? Do I want a single-ended push-pull? Uh, you know, what are the other features that make that stereo amp better than this stereo amp or this guitar amp better than this one. So I want to give you enough information to help you ask the questions you need to know about to make a better decision when buying a tube amp or building one or evaluating a circuit to build one. The math is going to be very limited. I'm capping it off at a freshman college level. That means you have a basic understanding of algebra and geometry, and you also have an, uh, an entry introduction into electrical uh, from in your physics course. Now, the, is it going to get more difficult than, difficult than that? No. I'm not going into partial differential equations. I'm not going into Laplace. Quite frankly, it's uh, high school math, algebra, and geometry uh, that's being applied things you should already know, I'm going to show you the application of it. I'm going to hold your hand all the way through to show you how to do that. I'm going to teach that here. Harmonic. It's important to understand what a harmonic is and what a distortion is. Because you can go out there in forums and it just drives me nuts of how many opinions are out there. Uh, it's kind of like people's noses. For every person that's in the room, you'll have one opinion. I'm going to get down to data and calculations. This is the theory being applied. This is the math. This is how you do it. So this is as difficult as it gets. An amplitude times sine omega t, which is the frequency plus a phase shift. That's it. This is It's limited to here. How we apply this is a different matter. But I'm going to take this a uh, term here and apply it and use it in the graphical Taylor and the Fourier transform videos. This is it. There's nothing else involved. Sines and cosines. How much simpler does it get? Well, it doesn't get any simpler. It, the work may be more involved, but it doesn't get any simpler, and that's that's it. So if that hopefully uh, encourages you, but a harmonic is a multiple integer of the fundamental 
frequency. At top, it, here's a fundamental frequency. If that is a fundamental frequency, it's like sine omega t plus a phase shift. One times omega t, or whatever that frequency is. It's not the first harmonic. Don't call it the first harmonic. It is the fundamental wave. The next one down, in the, in the same span of time that this one makes one cycle, a second harmonic makes two cycles, or two omega t, and a third harmonic makes three complete cycles. Is second harmonic, third harmonic. Each harmonic has its own phase shift. So for two omega t, second harmonic will have a second harmonic phase shift. I'll show you how to calculate that in the, in the upcoming few videos. And the same with the third harmonic. An overtone is not a harmonic. It is an overtone. When a, the hammer of a piano strikes middle C, it strikes three strings. The middle string is typically tuned on frequency, and then the two other strings, one sharp, one flat, and we strike all three strings, that is the note in the overtone that the piano has. A trumpet playing the same note, depending on the metallurgy, whether it's a silver uh, bell or a brass bell trumpet, has other, other overtones. A little bit more complex than the two other strings on the on the piano, so it's it's a complex tone. It's a, it's a partial. It's a sine wave within a complex tone. It's a, it does include a harmonic. So it's the multiple integer two times, three times, four times of the fundamental wave, and then it's, they have something what they would call an incomplete inharmonic partial. Because when you strike a note or you play a note, the bell is going to go into decay. It, you hit the hard strike on the piano or you hit the note on the trumpet bell, and then as it persists, it decays. And it can also change the frequency, and that would be an impartial harmonic. Uh, it's not a harmonic. That's the term for it. So it's nearly a multiple. It's a 1.9. 2 point something, 3 point something, but it's not a harmonic, it's an incom incomplete note, call it. So the overtone does not include the fundamental frequency itself. It's all, all this is the, freak, the fundamental plus an overtone. So you got the fundamental, piano and trumpet, plus its addition of an overtone, the three strings or the bell. That create that but though an overtone is not a harmonic I'm not going to calculate it I'm not going to address it I just want to let you know here now the overtones are not harmonics we're not addressing overtones I'm going to talk about distortion now if when the wave comes into an amplifier and leaves the amplifier and the output is an exact replica of the input then it has no distortion if it's made larger in amplitude, it's not distorted. If it's flipped 180 degrees, it's coming in this way and it's flipped this way, it's not distorted because when the signal comes into the grid, the way the tube operates, out the anode, it'll be 180 degrees out of phase. That's not distortion, it just flipped 180 degrees. That is not distortion. On this figure, Here's half a wavelength. It has no distortion. So what does the second harmonic do? It does this. It peaks the fundamental wave early. The third harmonic puts his dip in to the peak. So here it is, uh, the, uh, the, the wave coming in, the second uh, harmonic distortion, the third harmonic distortion. This curved nature part of it says there's other harmonics involved with this, but the second and third are doing the most, affect the, the fundamental the most. And that's, if we calm them down, everything else is going to be calmed down also. It all gets down into how much power the second and third harmonic have when they occur. They also the amplitude. So there's nonlinear distortion. Uh, the ratio of the voltage and current is a function of the magnitude of either. So 
if you're changing the current or you're changing the voltage by something that's significant, you're going to uh, create uh, distortion on the fundamental wave. A phase when the phase angle of the uh, transfer impedance is not linear with the at the time that the uh, frequency was transmitted, you vary uh, the the waveform and you get distortion. An example of that would be, let's pretend that the wave comes in through the preamp, through the phase splitter to the power tube, and it's not distorted. And then it enters into the output transformer and the speaker. And it doesn't sound right. It's because there's probably a phase distortion occurring because the speaker output transformer, the speaker, reflects uh, a load back onto the power tube and influences the power tube, works with the power tube, and it could cause a phase distortion. All that to say is this. If you are in that camp where I'm going to change out the speakers and make this sound better and well, maybe you could change the speaker out and actually improve distortion or make it worse. It depends on the loading of that speaker, and I'll talk about that later. And then there's frequency distortion. That is for you ham radio operators. I'm not going to talk about that because you really have to get into the fourth order or harmonic. And what that gets down to is you have a, a your voice signal coming in, and then you got to transmit it out the the antenna, but in the transmitter, you're, you have an oscillator that takes a voice frequency up to a radio frequency. You're down below 2000 hertz, and you got to get it up to kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz. And that oscillator can act in a way that the fourth harmonic is going to distort the voice frequency, and that causes distortion. That's something to be addressed in radio work, but it doesn't really affect uh, stereo amps and, and vacuum tube guitar amps because the power behind it is so small it's just negligible in other vacuum tube type work but it will be significant in radio work but I'm not going to talk about radio work for the rest of the series uh, phase distortion now when you look up other books in the 30s, 40s, and 50s you'll find a keyword called delay distortion that's the same as phase distortion. They, uh, depending on the authors and the, the subject at hand being addressed in the books, they may actually say phase shift causes this delay distortion. So if you're looking for reference material, one of the key words should be phase distortion. It's the alteration of the phase angle on the fundamental. You may not change anything else, but you may change the phase angle, and you can do that by just simply putting in an RC filter. It will change the phase and not necessarily, and the amplitude is not the big deal at that point. You, you've caused a phase change. Uh, again, 180 degrees out of phase is not the problem. So here's two waves in phase. Here's that same fundamental with the second and third harmonic. So what's, what we're going to address in this video series is the second harmonic occurs here, and I'm going to show you how to calculate what that phase angle is and the amplitude, because when you add this to the fundamental frequency to get the resultant frequency, this second harmonic is going to take this point and push it up. If there's enough amplitude, if there's enough power behind the second harmonic, it will push it up, which showed it uh, in the previous slide where the, the wave peaks early, but then after that peak, it has this dip. Well, that's the third harmonic. The third harmonic, when you add it to the fundamental frequency, affects the resultant by dragging down the peak or over here it pushes up the peak. So the second harmonic is going to change the asymmetry of the signal and the third harmonic is going to flatten out the peaks. In a nutshell, that's the problem with the second and third harmonic. So on a stereo amp, you don't want either one. On a guitar amp, you might want to leverage one or the other in order to get the sound that you want 
or you may not want either and you want it to be a really clean amp so now we got to pay attention how to calculate that where does it occur and then later on what kind of no negative feedback circuit not a resistor circuit do i build to get rid of this the effect of the second and third harmonic so that ends the introduction that is what i'm going to cover throughout this series in the next video, I'm going to address harmonic generation. Thank you for watching.